Hello and welcome to Mind of Steel's Christmas Book Club. This is the annual feature where I, Reynard Wilson, review the most ludicrous conspiracy theory books written by Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. Of course, I'm talking about Mark Steele. And you may be wondering, huh? Has Mark Steele written a book? And the answer is yes, he's, he's actually written two in partnership with David Albert Yates, who's also a very ridiculous conspiracy theorist. Now, Mark Steele is not the sort of person you'd think of as a literary personality. He's not going to be headlining at the Cheltenham Literary Festival. He's probably not going to be found at your local independent bookstore signing first editions. But he has written a book, and he wants to tell you all about it. Well, I'm just getting this in the post. Uh from David uh, Yates, and as you'll see on the front page, quite an interesting, most, most certainly the most banned person on the internet, because what they don't want you talking about is 5G. I'm sure you're wondering what sort of writer would be good enough to collaborate with a titan of conspiracism like Mark Steele. Who is this David Albert Yates? Well, he's self-published over 60 books, and you can find them listed on goodreads.com. Some of them even have reviews. Take, for example, this book. It's called Etch-a-Sketch Skies or Chemtrail Lies. And one reviewer, Mike Evans, described it as laughable chemtrail conspiracy rubbish. And I certainly don't disagree with him. That would be a very apt description of this book. But we know the man by his work. But who is he really? What kind of person is David Albert Yates. Look at this. Left by these aircraft and no one gives a <laughs> because these <laughs> doing it know what they are doing. Yeah, they know what they're <laughs> doing all right. They must know what they're doing. They do. They know exactly what they're doing and it's aimed at <laughs> you. They're fucking <laughs> coming for you. <laughs> Such eloquent, inspirational words. I, I can see now why Mark Steele chose David Albert Yates as his primary literary collaborator. They're made for each other. They're so perfect. And now let's start to look inside the book. What can you expect if you buy this book for Christmas? You couldn't make this up, folks. You couldn't. We are now the real media, yeah? I've provided more truth and more proof than any of the mainstream medias, and all of them combined, folks. David Albert Yates is the real media. You can forget about all those countless hours of CNN you may have binged, all that classic fiction you, you read in your, your teenage and early 20s, and that great movie you saw last week. It's all <laughs> written by a bunch of <laughs> who hate you. And the combined collaboration of David Albert Yates and Mark Steele will no doubt lead to a, a supercritical concentration of conspiracism, the likes of which the world has never seen before. This is going to be quite an interesting book for people to get for Christmas. Family, friends, get yourselves a copy for Christmas. Get it sent out uh, to you know, buy it for your friends and family who are just starting to wake up. What book do you buy for people who are just starting to wake up? If they were fully awakened to the truth movement, you could buy something like, um, oh, The Biggest Secret by David Icke. That's his book in which he propounds the, the clearly well-researched theory that our planet is secretly being controlled by a race of reptilian humanoids who are preventing humanity from reaching its true potential. Or what about Chariots of the Gods by Eric von Daniken, the pseudo-history that purports that uh, ancient aliens came to Earth and helped humanity build the pyramids and, and other structures? It, it, clearly a work of nonsense fiction. Oh, what about uh, The Protocols of the Elders of Zion? It's an anti-Semitic hoax that uh, purports that the world is also being controlled, but this time it's by a group of Jewish elders. <laughs> That's the sort of book you can buy somebody who is fully awakened. But if they're only partially awakened, I recommend The World's a Crime Scene by Mark Steele and David Albert Yates. And why? It's because it contains such compelling content. Just listen to this description of the opening chapter. This 
first part is basically the uh, witness statement, the expert witness statement that I give to uh, international lawyers who are t- attempting to take a government to court over the planned genocide. In the- there are some beginnings which are burned into our subconscious. Who could forget, call me Ishmael, uh, that, that first opening few paragraphs in Herman Melville's Moby Dick, in which Ishmael is called to the sea. I'm sure this is going to be very similar. A witness statement written by a man completely ignorant of the subject of which he is testifying, handed over to unnamed international lawyers for uses unknown, presumably related to a court case that never materialized. A legal action that went absolutely nowhere, and now lovingly transcribed as the opening chapter of All the World's a Crime Scene by David Yates and Mark Steele. <laughs> I mean, oh, she, this might put them off a little bit, but you see, people know they're getting banned. You know, we're all banned on social media. I've just tried to start building up my um, social media, and what's actually happening, you're seeing a lot of shadow banning. Even though they're not shutting you down, they're shadow banning you massively. Um, but they're not going to be able to stop this. Yeah, yeah. Mark Steele really is one of the most banned people on the internet. But it's not at all for the reason that he thinks. It's got nothing to do with the fact that he wants to talk about 5G or energy weapon kill grids or, or even his controversial views about vaccination. It's because he is so obnoxious. He's rude. The reason why he's been kicked off social media is because nobody wants to socialize with him. And maybe he's right, because you can't be banned from self-publishing books that nobody wants to read. David Albert Yates and Mark Steele are perfect for each other. I hope they collaborate on even more books, because the more time they spend writing and publishing books that nobody wants, the less time they'll have to annoy and cause real trouble for, for real people. You ain't going to stop this. You're not going to stop us. We're going to win this. We're going to bring these criminals to book. And don't think for one minute they're not going to suffer. They are going to suffer, right? The indignation and not being able to uh, live the life that they were planning to live, where they were in total control, the whole thing has fallen a bit. Previously, we've established that Mark's enemies, or the cult, as he refers to them, are intending to upload their consciousness into a vast computer network resembling Second Life, only to be destroyed by their own folly when they realize that their virtual selves are unable to maintain power stations. But uh, this whole thing, this whole book-writing escapade with David Albert Yates, was it all just some kind of acting out of a revenge fantasy? Was, was all of this just so Mark Steele could, could put it out there how much the people that he despises, which is pretty much everyone who doesn't follow him, well, they're all going to be jailed or, or punished or, or maybe hoist by their own virtual petard or, or perhaps destroyed by their own 5G energy weapon kill grids. It's all about revenge with Mark Steele. Leave this line around Christmas when you invite your family and friends around. And it's a fantastic talking point. I mean, I'm a controversial character, as you all should well know. I am pretty offensive. But like I said, offence is the best form of defence. And we Hasn't it been another wild ride into the mind of steel? We've learned so much in such a short amount of time, such as the fact that the best defence is to be completely f***ing obnoxious. Maybe that's why Mark makes himself into such an unbearable individual. It's because he knows that if he makes himself completely toxic to everybody else, nobody will want anything to do with him, especially social networks. Those companies that connect us all together, apparently they've been shadow banning Mark. And shadow banning may or may not exist. It might just be a figment of Mark's imagination because he is not as popular as he thinks he ought to be. But how is he circumventing this alleged shadow banning? Why? It's by self-publishing a conspiracy book with David Albert Yates, Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist and Britain's most unsuccessful conspiracy theory writer. Together, they're peas in a pod, 
They're a dynamic duo who cannot fail to fail. But one more thing before I go. Mark Steele's book is about to appear on goodreads.com, where you can write a review. Now, I'm sure you'd agree with me that it's unfair to review a book that you haven't actually read, but fortunately, the first chapter of the book is Mark's witness statement. I'm going to link to it from this show's show notes, and, and you can read that, and then if you feel so moved, please review it, because I'm sure a positive review from you will help Mark and David sell millions of copies of this book. Anyway, it's been a blast. I'll see you in a week's time for another episode of Mind of Steel.